Hello and welcome to 3D Max. In this video, I'll give you an introduction to 3D Max software. 3D Max is basically a 3D modeling, a rendering and animation software. You can also do a bit of video editing and special effects using this software. Once you load the software, you will get this particular interface. On the upper left corner, you have a button and this button is called the application button. Over here, you will get various options to open a new file. You can reset the software, you can open an existing file, you can save a scene and you can save a scene in a different name. You can import, export a number of other options. It is similar to the AutoCAD interface. And over here, you have a quick access toolbar, which you normally see in AutoCAD. You get a similar kind of toolbar here with which you can open the new file, open an existing drawing, save, undo, redo and things like that. And over here, we have an interface switcher using which you can choose a number of interface. We have already seen uh, such interface switchers in AutoCAD software. Suppose if you want to go to a different layout, for example, onto this alternate layout, just click on that. You will get a different layout here. And if you want to just come back to the previous layout, just click on the workspace default. You have reached back to the previous layout. And over here, you will see the title of the 3D scene. And here you have a online help any search string which you give you will get the corresponding help from the Autodesk server then you can search any information you have a subscription center and things like that which are rarely used and over here we have a number of menus with which you can perform a number of activities and these menus pop up when you take the cursor onto the corresponding menu headers and over here we have a toolbar this is the main toolbar which you frequently make use of and over here you have a panel which is used to represent the number of objects you have here seen and uh, you can go for some selective representation of uh, lights then you will get the light explorer then you have layer information and things like that basically this panel is will remain open in 2015 version of 3d max and over here you can see all the objects by default and these are called viewports in which the various views of a 3D object will appear. Over here you can see a top view and this is a friend view and this is a left side view and over here you have a perspective view. And you can change the layout of this viewport. By default we get a 4 viewport layout. If you want you can change the layouts by clicking on this particular arrow over here. Just click on that and you will see different layouts appearing. Suppose if I want this particular layout just click on that. So the existing layout will get replaced with a new one. If you want you can just switch over to the COD4 which is the default layout configuration which is the default viewport configuration then uh, this particular area is called uh, the prompt area in which you will get a number of information related with the optics. We'll see that in detail. Over here we have a slider bar. Uh, this is basically used while you perform animation and this is a frame slider. Below the frame slider we have a status bar which will give you the status of various parameters in the software and at the bottom you can see a prompt area which will uh, give you some prompts or some messages related with the activity which you perform in 3d max this area is meant to perform animation and over here you have a play button then rewind forward and things like that and over here you can just type a frame number to switch over to the particular frame and uh, on the right side we have a command panel and in which you will see all the commands that is available in 3d max and on the top of the command panel we will see a number of tabs we have a create tab then we have a modify tab then we have a hierarchy tab motion tab likewise you have a number of tabs when i click on the create tab you will get a number of buttons appearing here you can create a geometry you can create a shape you can create a light you can create cameras then you can create helper objects you can create space warps Likewise, different types of objects can be created. When I click on the geometry, then you will see a pop-up list appearing here. Onto that, you will get a number of basic building blocks, such as the standard primitives, extended primitives, compound objects, particle systems, etc. By default, the standard primitive is selected. And under standard primitive, you will see a number of buttons. When you click on each of this button, you can create the corresponding building block or corresponding object. When I click on box for example, uh, you will see uh, the number of parameters related to the box appearing here. So I'll just activate the perspective viewport by right clicking on this viewport. 
Now I'll just click to define the first corner of the box then I drag the mouse all the way to a particular point then I leave it there then I move the mouse straight up to specify the height. So I have actually specified the first corner, opposite corner and the height and you will see the corresponding parameters appearing here. You can edit these parameters. For example, if you want, you can go for a different height. Instead of 43, if I want, I can go for 65. So when the object remains in the selected state, uh, when you give new values, you will see the changes happening in the viewport. Then you can change the height segments, which means the number of segments along the height. You can either type in a value over here or else you have a upward and downward arrow over here. When you just click your mouse and, you, and drag the mouse upward or downward, you are actually changing the value inside that particular edit box. So instead of typing, you can also make use of the spinners to flexibly change the values. Now I'll create few more objects. So I'll start with the sphere. I'll click on the sphere, click on the center, then drag to specify the radius. Now I've got the sphere here, then I'll make a cylinder, click on the cylinder, center of the cylinder, radius of the cylinder, then I'll just drag to specify the height of the cylinder. Okay, then I'll create a, a torus. Just click on torus, center of the torus, okay, radius of the torus and radius of the tube. So I have specified all values by clicking and dragging the mouse. Over here, we have a set of icons and these icons are called viewport navigation tools. Each of these icons will let you navigate inside a viewport. We'll see these icons in detail. Now what I'll do is I'll click on the magnifying glass, which is the zoom icon and I'll just zoom out a bit. Now I feel like I want to change the height of this particular box. So what I can do is I can just click on the select object button. Then I'll click on the box to be selected. This icon is one of the most frequently used icon in 3D Max. It is used to select the objects. Then I'll click on modify tab. Okay, so you will see a number of information. First of all, you will see the name of the object that is selected. Then it's wireframe color, which is displayed here. When you just click on that, you can modify the wireframe color if you want. So I'll change the wireframe color to this color. Okay, I'll change this name to my box, for example. Then I can change the creation parameters. Like I can change the length of the box by dragging on the spinners. I can change the width of the box as well as the height of the box. Okay, then I can change the segments along the length, width and height. So after you create an object and if you feel like you want to change its parameters, all you have to do is just select the object and click on modify to access and edit the parameters. You can also select an object by clicking on the object name displayed in the panel on the left side. For example, if you want to select the sphere, just click on the sphere and that will get selected. And how will you know that an object is selected or not? By looking at the representation. The moment you select an object, you will see the edges of the objects getting highlighted on the object. But this representation can be changed. Now, in the four viewports, four different views of an object is displayed. Over here, you can see the perspective. Here it is front. Here you have the top and over here it's left side view. We can also change the display representation of objects in each viewports. For that, just click on the realistic button over here. Then you will see the presently available display representations. By default, the realistic is activated. If you click on shaded, it will show you uh, the shaded representation, but you can't make out much difference here. Only when you apply the materials, you will be able to make out the difference. Next, we have edged faces, that is faces as well as the edges displayed. We also have a wireframe as one representation. So it will be displayed like this as if it is made up of a number of lines. Then you also have some stylized representation such as graphite, color pencil, etc. Okay, each of these representations you can try out on your own. I'll bring it back to realistic representation, which is the default representation. And we have already seen this area. And I told you that it is a viewport navigation tool. And here we have a zoom icon or the lens icon. When you just click on that, you can just magnify the object within that viewport. When you click on zoom all icon, this magnification will be applicable to all the viewports. When you click on zoom extends icon, you will get the maximum possible available magnification. But since you have already selected an object, the software magnifies in such a way that that object fits in the screen. But if none of the objects are selected, and if you go for zoom extends, you will get the maximum available magnification. When you click on zoom extends all, this will be applicable to all the viewports. Then over here, it is called a field of view icon with which you can change the field of view or focal length of the camera through which you are looking at this object. Then this is a pan icon, okay, with which you can pan the screen and that is also applicable to orthogonal viewports. 
then this is the orbit camera icon with which you can just orbit or move the camera around the object like this then this is called the minimum maximum toggle icon with which you can maximize and minimize a particular viewport now let's see some keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys which will help you save time while you work now if you want to turn off this grid which will act as a construction plane in 3d max you can type the letter g for that so when you type g that grid will get turned off and if you press g once more it will get turned on it's a toggle in fact in our approach we won't be doing any construction of any of the objects in 3d max all our objects in autocad and we will be importing those objects to 3d max so we don't have to concentrate much on the grid but of course 3d max has got a good modeler but since our kind of engineering applications autocad 3d can be used to model any object that you can dream of now here we have a zoom icon and if you want to zoom you can press the letter z for that now i'll just zoom out and if you want to get maximum magnification type the letter z now you have got that but if you select a particular object and if you type z that particular object will get magnified to the maximum extent okay so i'll just deselect it by clicking outside the object now that got deselected now you press z once again to get the maximum previous magnification see any view changes can be undone using shift z key combination so just press the shift key and z key or z key of the keyboard undo the view changes for example i'll just zoomed in okay so this is my present view and if i want to go back to the previous view all i have to do is just hold on the shift and z key now this is the previous view now press once more to get back to the view before that like this you can go back to any number of previous views by pressing shift z key but of course control z can be used to undo any object related modifications you have performed for example i'll select this object and i'll click on select and move icon over here i'll talk more about this particular icons in the next video so i'll just move it in the x direction take the cursor onto the x axis and move it okay now i'll just press outside this object to deselect it now when i press control z this particular change will get undone okay so that is a normal undo and of course you can do the undo operation over here and redo can also be done here and redo is done using control alt z uh, next we will see the shortcut key to orbit around the object if you use a three button mouse you can do a number of activities using the scroll wheel if you simply press the scroll wheel after activating the viewport you can just zoom in and zoom out inside the viewport okay when you hold down the scroll button of the mouse you can pan the screen like this you can pan it okay and you can orbit around this object by holding down the alt key and you press the scroll wheel to orbit or move around the object but if you choose a particular object and if you perform alt scroll wheel activity then you will be rotating the view using that object as the base point or you will be moving the camera around that object you can activate minimum maximum toggle button by pressing the alt key and w key simultaneously so this is alt w like this you can toggle between the maximizing and minimizing viewports so these are the few shortcuts in 3d max which are generally used next we will see the different methods to select objects because in 3d max you can alter an object in two different ways one is by performing transformations another one is by performing modifications in both cases you should learn the technique to select objects it's very easy we have a number of options for that we have already seen that the names of objects are displayed in this panel you can obtain the similar panel using the select object by name icon over here so you will see the names of the objects here here you have a number of filters that means you can selectively suppress the display of unwanted objects here now presently we have only 3d geometry okay now i'll create a few shapes here by clicking on the create button then this is a shape okay shapes are nothing but just two dimensional profiles i'll make a circle by picking the center and i'll just drag to specify the radius then i'll make a rectangle then i'll make a, an ellipse by specifying uh, the major axis and all that information so these are all created by picking using the mouse now when i click on the select object by name i have the 2d as well as the 3d objects displayed but you can see the change in representation 3d objects are displayed by using the spheres whereas 2d objects or shapes are displayed using a different representation an overlapping circle and a square suppose if you don't want to display the 2d objects in this dialog box so what i can do is i can just disable the display of that so none of the 2d objects are displayed i can just press this button to bring those objects back on the display 
Likewise, you can suppress the display of lights, cameras, helper objects, etc. You can select objects simply by clicking. But if you want to select more than one object, you have to hold down the control key while you select. Okay. Now you can see that you have selected more than one objects. The same activity can also be performed in this panel. Suppose if you want to perform collective selections, I'll just go back to the 4 port configuration. And if you want to perform collective selection, we have a number of options for that. Just click on that. So we have a rectangular region selection, then circular region, then we have polygonal, lasso, paint bucket, likewise you have a number of options. I'll just click on select objects, then I'll click on rectangular. I'll just zoom out a bit. I'll change the display representation to wireframe. Okay, I'll turn off the grid by pressing the G key. Now I'll use this rectangular window and I'll click to opposite corners to specify the rectangle. Now the software has selected all the objects which are fully enclosed as well as touched by this rectangle. That is because over here we have an option called window or crossing. Presently the crossing is selected. So this particular window will act like a crossing window. The same option is also available in AutoCAD. Okay, this is a crossing window. So the property of a crossing window is that it selects those objects which are fully enclosed as well as touched by this window. Okay, you, but if you want, you can make it into standard window, then you can just make a selection. But the standard window needs all the objects to be fully enclosed within the window. So in this case, that ellipse will not be selected because that part of the ellipse is lying outside the window. Okay, all these objects are selected. Now you can also make use of a circle to perform the selection. This is called a circular selection. So whatever is captured within the circle will get selected. And depending upon window or crossing, the behavior of that particular circular region changes. Then this is a polygonal selection in which you can pick a number of edges to define an irregular polygon. Whatever is captured within that polygon will get selected. Then we have a lasso tool with which you can perform a freehand selection like this. Okay. Then we have a paint bucket tool with which you can select the objects having the similar color. But presently we don't have any other objects with this particular color. So you won't be able to see any other objects getting selected. So these are the commonly used selection options. But you can also select more than one objects by holding down the control key like this by picking. And if you want you can make a group of these selected objects. For that you have to first select the objects. Then you have to go to group menu and click on group. And I'll call it as say S1. You can give any name. Okay. So you have created a logical block of these objects. And when you just click on that and when you move it, the entire object will move as such because the group selection is enabled. At any point of time, you can disable the group by clicking on the group and ungroup it. Now the objects are individual objects. Now this function is also not very frequently used in 3D Max since we are importing all the required objects or geometry from AutoCAD. So that's all about the brief overview of selecting objects. In the next video, I'll show you the different methods to alter objects in 3D Max.